Jess was like, hold on. I'm just making sure. Cause I actually just realized that I hope all of that goes because oh. I just forgot to push the button, go live. So oh, in case, oh, oh, I, I have a we can live it over. in the corner of my screen. So, right, I so I'm hoping okay. that yeah. all of that recording just sort of shows up. It's on been on the screen. whole time. So I think yeah. so okay. here's, here's how we, <laughs> If y'all missed the introduction, we're live chatting about David Baldacci. Oh, oh, sorry. We talked about how we found him through Masterclass. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had heard of him, of course, because I saw his books yeah. all over, but I just, and then when I yeah. saw him, I just, right. I think what spoke to me was when he talked about how much he, pages and pages, a thick notebook he had of research for like a three quarters of a page conversation yes. and I was like yes that definitely totally spoke to like your input connected. right that yeah <laughs> I love research and I love yeah. the research so deeply and then you use this little bit here and this little bit there and and right. sometimes we'll come back you know I wrote it's been over 10 years I feel like it's been over 10 years since I wrote my first Regency um historical oh, yeah. and then this last year I wanted to write another a new like move my children of the moon series into a new a new era and I had originally planned to do that into the Victorian era so I had bought all these new research books on Victorian and and I realized the story was actually Regency it wasn't Victorian oh no and but what was so cool is I'd already done so much research I mean when I went back I had read over 40 maybe 50 nonfiction books back then to do the Regency research I had reams and reams of printed out what I printed from other sources I had done interviews and like you use that again so like that's what writing is about right like yeah, we use yeah, this yeah, time. Yeah, I mean yeah. you guys were just chatting this week I mean you may not want to talk about it but you're just chatting this week how you like use some research and you're using some research oh, yeah. you weren't oh, expecting to use on yeah. something and, and nothing is just, ever wasted no no and and I love it when you you could read like a whole nonfiction book and you might only use one sentence from it, but it's like, it feels authentic because the guy in it mm-hmm. said such and such, you know, right, and that right. just feels authentic and you use right. it for your. Right. And I love doing more than just reading. Like I like to do interviews. I like to do mm-hmm. on the spot, which Carol, Carrie and I did a, a research trip to the yes. Oregon Coast yes. for right. the book. For some new series we're doing. But so let's get back to David Baldacci. So we watched his masterclass. We loved it. And we realized that if he, we connected so much on that level, like as artists, that we wanted yes. to read his books. Right. So we did. We, <laughs> and I'm going to say the book pimp got us started because that's Carrie. She's our book pimp. <laughs> yes. Official. She's I'm like, the, you don't well, know pimp, I think. Yeah. <laughs> always, that's right. I'm that's right. Different BBC she's stories. like, there was a sale. And did you guys see that there were, and we all like got, so we started with the memory man, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I started with Will Roby. Yeah. Okay, you start with Will Roby and I start with the Memory Man. Yeah, and I started with Memory Man too. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love Amos Decker. Yeah, he's think, one of my favorite characters. And yeah. I think that's why we love Baldacci's writing. It's yeah, the characters. It's the characters. Oh my yeah. gosh, yes. I mean, obviously the plotting is really oh, great oh, and yeah. it's so yeah. good. But you can have great plot and not great characters and you just get right. bored. Right? right it's the characters I'm that never we care bored about. reading his books so yeah. last night you guys reading in bed for me has become problematic i'm an old woman mm-hmm. and this is <laughs> not the thing it used to be especially in books <laughs> i read the first half of this book last night in bed and i'm moving and trying to shift with all my pillows so i can like hold this because i did not want to put it down i did not want to put it down that's the thing with him right i mean he's yeah. so good um, he's so good at keeping you turning pages. Like, yeah, and you, you say you, to yourself, okay, I'm yeah. just going to finish this chapter, chapter and then I'm going to And, that's bed, it. and you get to done. the end of the chapter yeah, and you're and like, there's oh, a, there's no, a I can't stop. There's a cliffhanger there and you can't right. not keep reading. You have no. to keep reading. No. And no. Um, But again, it goes back to the characters because if you don't care about the people you're reading about, you're not going to care what happens to them in the book you can have the best plot ever designed but if you don't care about the people that are moving through that plot no one's going to read it and he is so good at crafting characters that feel so real like I feel like I could 
go have a cup of coffee with Amos Decker and just know him. And I, I love that. I love him. I love that yeah. character. He's so yeah. flawed and he's very he's good so at what he does, but he's such a mess otherwise. And I just <laughs> yeah. that so much, you know? You know, it's so funny because like, I don't even see him as a mess. That's so funny. Cause like, I know we like respond differently, but I, like right. for me, he's just human. He's just like, Oh, this guy is just like a regular right. person as opposed to being that perfect FBI agent right. that perfect like yeah, I love that whatever. I want to tell yeah. you guys one of my very best friends from back when I was a kid so we've been friends for many many years is online and she loves Yay. Is that you? hello Myra it's really good to see you. Hey, <laughs> <We're all alone. laughs> thanks for joining us yes <laughs> yeah so I'm just like it's just, it's really, it's so fun. So Myra, you have been reading the Memory Man series too, right? I'm just going to, I'll watch for comments to see if she's been reading. But I think that's what she said. She's reading that series too. You know me, I think. <clears throat> Carol, well, and it's been interesting book. for me because I, I'm reading the Memory Man series, but then yeah. I've, I've switched back and forth. So I'll read a Memory Man book and then I'll read a Will Roby book. Uh-huh. And um, it's a different, um, Will Roby is an assassin. So yeah, for the government, I want to read um, whereas so Amos bad. Decker yeah. is a, works for the FBI, a special control. But he's a good assassin. Okay. I mean, he yeah, does it. He's, he's a sanctioned. Yeah. The thing that was you know, very like, interesting about how yeah. Baldacci created the Will Roby character is that he, I mean, this is a person who does really bad things in his job, but he does it for a very good reason. And you can tell by the way that his character was crafted that deep down he's a good person. Yeah. And that's I what makes you that. be invested yes. in that character. Yes. yes. Yeah. So and much. I just, it's so, and it's done so well and so artfully that you don't even notice the craft that goes into that. But that's such a difficult thing to do, especially with a character who. On the surface, you think, oh, my God, what a horrible person. What a horrible person who <laughs> yeah. does all that stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. But you, you learn very quickly that, that that's just what this person does. It's that not who they are. Is, and you um, care about them. Yeah. 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 And that's I so just want to pop in as a writer. Real yeah. quick that Aaron is here from Aaron's oh. Reading Room. Oh, hey, Aaron. Hey, Aaron. Good to see you. <laughs> We have someone else. I just want to, like, I don't want to ignore people. Someone saying, don't waste your life on books. Go out and drink beer instead of live like there's no tomorrow. Not going to happen. <laughs> Sorry. No, I don't even like beer, honestly. Books. Love reading, love writing. I feel like I'm living my life. So thanks. Um, I, I am one of those rare people. I, I absolutely, I don't like beer. I don't like the taste of it. So I don't. Drink I don't it. either. Yeah. I'll drink other stuff, we're but not, not beer. Yes, no. Yes. No. Well, you were saying, Lucy, about um, reading it in bed. I, I think I've, I saw a thing that said, uh, <laughs> readers never go to bed alone. <laughs> right? It's true. Right? I have that. Yeah, a friend of mine gave that to me, Patty. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah it's just it's I love that saying because it's true like there's yeah. we live a thousand lives reading books and yeah of course there's all of the rest of life family and all of the yeah. wonderful yeah. things about life yeah. and friendship like my friends that are here and our friends that are here but um Myra is saying she read all of Alex Decker the all of the Alex Decker books and Amos Decker sorry and um yeah I just oh my gosh I love the books when a series catches you like that guys like when you just have to read the next book, you know you found an author you're probably going to read like for until they're done writing. Yeah. Because and these characters grow and change, and yeah, you know, so they're sure. not just flat characters. You know, from well, I've told you guys, I have a serious Baldacci addiction. I have a problem. I, I, mean, I can't. I can't stop buying through. the books. Like I finish oh, one, I, I immediately go on Amazon and buy the next yeah, one. I buy can't the not next do one. it. It's a problem. It's seriously, it's an issue. It's like a. It's like a an addiction. I mean, it's a good addiction, but still. <laughs> yes. And every time a Baldacci book comes in the mail, my husband's like, how many books did he write? You know, he can just exactly. see it. Yeah. It's true. I um, love it. I love, you know, Tom actually loves Baldacci. So he has been listening with me. We started a new um, audio book together and then we're oh, both cool. reading the other books, the Amos Decker books. We started the one Oh, she's an FBI agent. I can't remember the name of the book. Sorry. Atlee Pine. The one yes. with Atlee yes. Pine. Yes. 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 Atlee yes. Pine's I've read, book. I think I've read at least one of hers. I don't know. I may have yeah. read two. And I'll I, tell I you, like her. Experience, it's really funny because 
the first time I started reading the Amos Decker books, um, Memory Man, I, you guys know, I was in constant migraines. I had them every day and they were awful. And so I, I started reading the book, but I just couldn't because it would give me a migraine. So I got the, um, the audio book and the narrator sounded like the voice in my head when I was reading. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. wow. And wow. so I'm finding that even as I'm reading the books, I can hear the same voices in my head because they are the ones I heard to begin with. It was just oh, it, nice. That, the so way cool. they picked those narrators. Let me see. Um, Myra said, sorry, Amos. Oh yeah, no problem. Anyway. So yeah. So it's just like, it's really uh oh, she trees up. <laughs> well, I, I guess we'll have to. I love that. I oh, love there she is. Okay, you froze up for just you a froze second. Up for a second. Oh, you froze up for a second. Technology, guys. Technology. Yeah, really. yeah. <laughs> it's been crazy this week. Technology is just, I don't know if it's the planets or what, but it's. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I know there was a full moon a few days ago. Maybe so. that's it. I don't know. <laughs> been a little nuts so but yeah no I like the Atlee Pine ones too yeah. and I liked um how boy, I think it was in that first one I love her secretary they're the FBI secretary oh <laughs> right yes. I know she's a gem she and that's is. What, I mean that is why we love these books it's like you yep. go back for the characters right. you go back. plotting it's just I guess maybe being writers ourselves plotting feels kind of I don't know normal easy to us more it doesn't getting the characters right is what makes a book work yeah it's right. really I mean obviously you want the plot to work but we don't want plot right. right my only dnfs are either we were talking about this online like they're either like they are misogynistic bigoted racist whatever or they have plot holes that you just right. can't reconcile you can't, and can't yeah, finish the book. yeah well and I but, think Baldacci is really good about not only his main characters but he creates yeah. like a whole world right. it's oh very, yeah yeah he has no placeholder characters about. yeah there are right. secondary right. characters yeah. there yeah. are and also his settings are so well constructed I mean you feel like you know this place like you yep. can walk yep. out your door and yep. be in this place that he's created yep. and um you know again that's that takes a lot of skill to do that um, and, and not reveal all the work behind it to the reader. You know, it just comes across as, oh, this is just a, a bingeable read, but there's right. so much work that goes into it behind right. that. Yeah. Yeah. The layers of writing yeah. that you know are happening. Yeah, and I, I think as really... authors, we can- we Don't can they appreciate... say the easier yeah. it is to read, the harder, harder, harder the writer was to write. Yes, yes. yes. Guys, I'm gonna throw yeah. a question out there because I answered okay. it in the chat, but I want you guys to answer it. Aaron asked, um, he hasn't read any Baldacci. What book to start with? I know what I said. What do you guys say? Um, I would say Memory Man. I think that's a good place to start. I, I think it gives um, a good um, flavor of what Baldacci is all about. Yeah. Or um, The okay. Innocent. I like The Innocent. The, innocent. That was yeah, the, first the Will Roby one was. That crazy. was my first one of him yeah. and I couldn't put it down. So yeah. yeah, either one. Yeah. And Myra says she loves how Baldacci draws you into the book. Tracy, you were saying something about this whole, like, can't put it down thing. I remember weeks ago, we were talking about how you were just like, I can't go to sleep at night because I think I'm going to finish this chapter. And then you can Seriously. Yeah, yeah. It, it's true. Because I read on my Kindle and um, yeah, it's just, you know, you get to that point and I say to myself, okay, I'm going to read one more chapter and then I'm going to be done. But then whatever it is, I'll get to the end of that chapter and he throws a curveball in and it's like, well, I got to know what, you gotta read right? that, I got to I gotta you know? find out what uh, happens with yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Then I read another one and then another one. And another, then another one. one. And, yeah. and he has short chapters too. Yeah. So they can, really his books are long. Yeah. They've got like 90 chapters yeah. in them. So you can, I know, right? Yeah. Like they're long. Yeah. yeah. I mean, thank God, yeah. you know, you they're can long have a book like this and you think, well, we're going to have big print. Yeah. We do not. This is tiny, tiny print. Yeah. Migraines again. Right. Well, and I wanted to go back to the masterclass thing real quick. Yeah, um, sure. I don't mind because um, I just only recently got into masterclass like last year, last um, yeah, November, I think is when yeah. I started yeah. on there. And um, I joined initially to watch um, Neil Gaiman's um, masterclass because I love his. Oh, was so good. Oh, that one was and, so good. Um, it was excellent. And then after I finished that, um, masterclass would pop up um, different people that it thought I might be interested in watching and um 
Baldacci came up. And I, the only way that I knew that name was because I have an aunt and uncle who love reading like mystery thriller books and mm-hmm. they devoured his stuff, but I had never read anything. Um, and so I thought, well, you know, I'll see what it is. So I started yeah. watching his master class, and it was so, <sighs> some of the Neil Gaiman's was the same way as Baldacci's. So I will preface that. Um, It's very personable. I mean, you feel like he is just a normal person. And and I'm not, I mean, authors, we all are just normal people. But But, I mean, sometimes you, you, you see a person who in your mind, you think has attained a certain level in life and whatever they do. And so you think perhaps that person won't be as accessible or friendly or, um, you know, just a normal type of person. But Baldacci was so, so friendly and so personable. And his talk was so relatable that I just devoured the whole thing. And I loved it. Um, (laughs) I might get some flack from this, but contrasting that, um, after that, I watched, uh, the Dan Brown masterclass and, um, yeah. Um, Let me just say that everything that drew me to the Baldacci was not not present in that second one. And um, I, I read the Da Vinci Code when it came out. I think everybody in the world read the Da Vinci Code when it came out. Um, It was a very fast plotted book. And I think um, it kept you turning pages because of that because of all the facts and, and things like that, that were in there. But I knew immediately when I started watching David or uh, what's his name, Dan Brown, sorry. When I started watching Dan Brown's class, as soon as I got to the second class, I figured out why I didn't connect to his books. Yeah. And why I did connect so strongly with Baldacci's books and it's the characters because Dan Brown definitely is an author who constructs the plot first so the plot is everything and then his people are stuck into the holes in the plot to make the plot move forward versus Baldacci who starts with his characters and his characters are everything and then he what happens in the plot is because of the character and the arc that the character has to go through not the reverse so um that's what really I watched his master class and I liked his master class so much I thought because he talks about a couple of his books including Memory Man yeah. and that's what got me to read that because I liked his class yeah. so much I thought you know what I'm gonna check that book out. That's what we have. Yeah, that that was what, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And now about, I'm totally right? addicted. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That's my Baldacci origin story. Yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. That's <laughs> like, well, you know, he was talking about Will Roby, you know, and, and okay. a scene in The yes. Innocent. And I'm like, oh, I got right. it. Yes. Right? Yeah, right? yeah. Right? that's exactly. Yep. And because of him, because of him being so personable and so accessible in his masterclass, that's what got me to try one of his books. And now yeah. I'm an avid fan. I will read Absolutely. anything that he writes. Yeah. Um, yep. But yeah, I mean, that just, you know, that that just goes to show how, being real and being a good person and being an accessible normal person um in your real life is a benefit to you because that draws people to you you know what i mean right i think so you know myra said too that she felt the same way that um he shows his characters that are real and feeling and i think that that's just that's the thing you absolutely feel like you're reading about real people. Yes, we know it's a fictional world, but they feel real. Right. And I feel like Amy Secker could walk in here and I, and I could yeah. have a conversation with him. You yeah, know what absolutely. I mean? yeah. And you love that. And you love that, that, that you read that. And I do, sometimes I like, I'll just stop reading and, and think about what, um, I know this is going to sound funny, but like what Baldacci was thinking when he was writing it. Cause like, it's so immersive to me and so, I don't know, so completely engaging that I also like get engaged with, (coughs) excuse me, the author, Mm -hmm. which is one of the things that I love in my writing. I do seek to connect to readers. Right. And I seek to connect on more than just a, hey, I wrote a book and you read the book level. But like, I, I love to hear from readers to talk to readers about the characters, about the story and what it did and how it impacted them. Because that's how I read. I am a reader before I'm ever a writer. And I just, there are times when 
an author can just pull you out of a place or put you in a place you need to be or you yeah. know, help you yeah. through. Yeah. Like I said, I started watching those master classes because I missed being around other authors right. and yeah. being yeah. and being around certain authors in those, like you said, like Neil Gaiman, man, I love that master class. It was so good. I will say I started the whole thing with I can see his face in my mind. You guys know because we James all watched Patterson? It. Yes, James Patterson. Oh, yeah. I, I watched started that. with him. Then I, yeah. I moved to Neil Gaiman. I listened to Margaret Atwood. I did the Judy Bloom one, which listening to her and I love her. She's amazing also taught me why everyone in my life has always said, oh, you should write a children's book. Why I can't, because I don't see the world the same way she does, you know, right. like with yeah. that whole childlike yeah. love and, yeah. and yeah. It, it was so great, but being able, I think it's a privilege to see the behind the scenes of authors. That Absolutely. We yeah. I love and that. I think it's that, that's a gift. It yeah. was really, really cool. But also and the way you book. mentioned putting yourself in the book, I think uh, why a lot of my readers, I hope anyway, <laughs> seem mm -hmm. to, you know, connect with my characters because when I'm writing, I'm thinking, well, I reacted to something this way. I can't be the uh, only one in the world that right, did, you know, right. and, I, and then you find out, no, a lot of other people felt the same right. way and they can right. connect with the characters. And, you know, even you know? talking about like Dan Brown, it's such a great example, though, of how there are so many books out there and there's so many readers out there and we connect on different ways and different levels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He has a huge readership and it's fantastic that he does. Like I know that you guys love that I'm like totally left cold by, won't mention who it is because it doesn't matter. The point, it's not the point, like right. it doesn't matter whose book we like or don't like, right? It's right. the books that we love are the ones that, that take us forward in life. That take right? us, yeah. Right? yeah. right. And the books that we don't love, it's fine because someone else out there is loving on those yeah. books. Yeah, well, I Not read, I won't really loving on those books. say what it is, but a very popular book that, oh, you got to read it, you got to read it. And so I did, and I disliked the book because I didn't like either of the main characters. Yeah, and I'm like, really why different. am I reading this if I don't like either one yeah. of them? Right. Yeah, you know? absolutely. <laughs> and I, the thing is, and so, like 10,000 other people will. And that oh, yeah. I mean, story is that it's not just the words you put on paper, but when a reader picks up a book, they're bringing their story to that book. Yeah, and their experience. So they're well, going to differently than you wrote it and differently than the person next to them reading it. And so right. it's like, but it's really good. And this is what I love about you guys is that when you find someone who likes the same books that you do, you get to yes. talk about that and we get to yeah. enjoy that yeah. together. Yes. And that's what book chat's about. That's what we love doing here is talking about those yeah. books we love yeah. to read. Yes. Because yep. I'm like, always afraid to, when I love a book so, so much, I'm almost afraid to recommend it because yeah. then what if the person comes back and says, man, eh, it was okay. And I'm yeah. like, what do you mean? What do you mean? Right. Well, and you that's know? the thing. I mean, even the books that we love so, so much. I mean, if you go online, like if you go on Amazon and Goodreads, you can find as, as passionately as you love this book, you'll find someone else who gave it a one star or did not right. finish the book oh, and yeah. found the exact opposite. And I mean, that's just the magic of books. I mean, everybody yeah. connects to them in different ways. And um, yeah, I mean, that's that's the beauty of it. You, and know, you bring your own experiences it. Yeah. to it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about that. There's a magic. Books are magic. Writing is magic. For me, it's like, I know you guys like to chat story ideas. You love to talk about plot. And, you know, I really am reticent to do that. And I realized, because the other day I was thinking about that, I feel like I'll lose the magic of the story in my head if I share it too much. Oh, oh. But I love that you guys do. So it's like we all have different ways of writing, right? Like everybody yeah. writes differently. Yeah. Everybody reads differently. Story is so. And I remember the first time um, Debbie Maycumber gave me some advice. And she's like, don't tell your story because then you won't have the passion to write it. Now I was the right person to hear that because it's absolutely true for me, you know? Right. And for Carrie, you would feel like somebody was muzzling you. <laughs> yeah. You I'm like, you cause I ready? have to, I have to talk about it to find out if that really is my story. Right. Not, right. So it's like, it's all a different, like, but that's the magic. Yeah. There's so much magic yeah. in storytelling. Well, Sorry. and I think that's I part that. of the, author journey too. people yeah. who are new authors who are starting out discovering what type of writer they are yeah um, you know because 
like I started out pantsing too. What's called pantsing, where you just you don't have you a just plan. Write. You yeah. write the story as it comes. Yeah. Um, because my first book came in a dream, so I just wrote it out longhand on a bunch of legal pads until it was done. It took me a month, and then went from there. But, um, yeah. Now I do. I do what's called plotting. So yeah, I, don't, I don't plot out the entire book. I'll do right. like the beats of it because as a person, me, I have to, I have to feel like I have some kind of roadmap. Otherwise I just, I, I, I just tiptoe through the pool. Right. All day. It's what so you, what you I don't have any, I don't have any direction. So I need to have some kind of guidepost so that I can say, okay, I'm here. I need to get here. What happens in between those points? Um, so I do all that. I'll map out the major beats. Um, and that also helps me when I have to do like a synopsis or something for my editor. But um, I do that. And then um, I still leave enough room in there that I have some room to play, you know. Yeah. So I do have those moments where I can kind of, oh, well, what if this happened or what if that happened? Because mm-hmm. there's yeah. no like set way to get from point A to point B. Um, but I do need those those points. Those points, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Rails, I so. just I want to share That's real quick exactly Myra, what I do. I want to share real quick that Myra said she loves the creativity that we're showing in our conversation. Aww, yeah. Thank you. Because I mean, that's I had uh, because when I first sent my uh, to she's now my agent, but when I first sent her my manuscript, there she called me and she said, "You have no plot." <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so so I had to you know go out and learn how to plot but I was taking all these classes but it was just you know what I was hearing and I was talking to Raging Romantics the podcast is coming out next month um, that all these classes it was like the old Steve Martin joke how to become a multimillionaire. well first you go out and you get a billion dollars and then you <laughs> and that's all I was hearing in all these plotting right. was like well you get this plot first and then you develop it and I'm like but I have no plot I have right I, I remember well, and that's the thing too that's, that's something else that takes so much time because there are like a million people out there who different. swear that their way is the way it's to the go only way oh, yeah how no. to use them right. no. and no. um nine ninety nine point nine percent of the time it's not my way no, so yeah, I had yeah. To, it took me it took me several years to come up with a system that works for me. And I actually developed it and I cobbled it together from a bunch of different um, the way methods that people so had. And I cobbled it yeah. together. It's yeah. my own. I'm happy to share it with other people. Um, but I don't and think that that's like you shared it with me. It. Yeah, you shared yeah. it with me. And it's interesting, yeah. but it's like, no, this is not the way I work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know. The thing I loved about one of the one of the um, mini shorts in in Baldacci's masterclass was that he talked about how isn't he the one that said like how you write one book can be completely different from how you right. write your book yeah. and you yeah. need to be prepared for that prepared for that process being good for that book but not necessarily working not for this the right book. one yeah and I think yeah. I run into my OCD and I and I I am genuine people get a little, I really do have OCD and it really can be a struggle. And we run in headlong into that yes. wall sometimes because we want, I want to use the same process yeah, on every book. Oh, oh. Yeah. And it does not work. It doesn't absolutely always work. does not work. Yeah. There will be yeah. some books that I have like three different processes now that I can kind of identify. Mm-hmm. And I never know when I start a book, which one it's going to be, where right. I'm going to go with this book. And one of the processes to just write a book, just write it. And like have no idea of where I'm going. It's very rare, but once in a while, that's just the only way I can tell a story. And it's just, it's just really interesting how you can kind of go in and you have all these different ways of writing and you just have to kind of deal. You have to deal with it as it is and allow your creativity to take yeah, whatever absolutely. step. Yeah, you have to trust through. your own process. Right. And yeah. every book is and different. You're right. I yeah. mean, some books yeah. come so easily and they just, you just write it and it just, it works and yeah. it just, it comes very, it's yeah. a very smooth process, but then you have other books that they could be some of your favorite characters that you've written, but the book itself is like pulling teeth to get that book done. Yes. And yes. it doesn't matter yes. what process you use. It just, right. it's hard work getting yep. that book yep. done. 
Yeah. And I, I, yeah. I, you never know when yeah. you start what kind right. of book it's going to be. We don't know. Will it be a smooth book? Will it be a hard yeah, book? It's out? always you know? a... And it's when you're reading, the, the thing, the really good thing, when you're reading like Baldacci, you never know what his You never see was. any of that work. Because no. all you see is no. the story no. and it's so good and it's so engaging and it pulls you in. And I'll keep reading them because that keeps me going. It inspires me. It keeps yep. me yes. encouraged. Yep. It keeps yep. me... And it entertains me. I'd rather sit and read a Baldacci book than watch a show, even some of my favorite yes. shows, because these yeah. are like amazing. I mean, you know, like I'm happy. Yeah, with a book, you get inside that character's head. Yeah. And you can yeah. hear what yeah. they're thinking yeah. and feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Where yeah. on TV, you don't get that. You kind of have no, to infer right. that on your own. But I love being inside that person's head, you know. For just, sure. Um, yeah. So yeah. the one thing we can absolutely agree on is that we all love reading David Baldacci. <laughs> <laughs> Even yeah, though we all have different processes, right? 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 You know? and we need to yeah. love some of the same authors and not love some of the same authors, but right. this is an author that, because of his characterization, I would say, and his he does do really strong plotting. I mean, you can't oh, downplay yeah. it. It's just that it's, right. exactly. it's so seamless that the plot just feels so natural. Yeah, I, right, I mean, right. I read some of his, yeah. and I'm like, how in the heck did he ever come up with all that? You right. know, right. how I think all that's because this, it's filtered yeah. through the characters. I mean, yeah. the plot is yeah, there sure. definitely, but it's filtered through the characters' experience of those yeah. situations yeah. and that plot. Yeah, and I think that's the difference. Um, I mean, I read the Da Vinci Code. I thought it, I liked it at the time. I thought, yeah. it was good, but I would never go back and read that book again because I read it once. Oh, right. Yeah, I right. read there it and it's done. And, and yeah, there are books I didn't connect not. like that. But like the Amos Decker books, I would go back and start the series all over again because oh, I love sure. the character yeah. so much. I want to spend more time with that character. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So I think that's the difference. Yeah. For me. And it's, it's, it's yeah. a wonderful difference. I want to mention for anybody who's watching this later or whatever that. You don't have to be a writer or any kind of artist to take masterclass. Masterclass. Oh, and yeah, not, they have not everything. For masterclass, but I want y'all to know that if you want to see some of these really awesome behind the scenes authors. They have everything on they're there. They're so great. Oh, and, yeah. Um, Cooking and singing yeah, it's, it's and music. Astrophysics. And I know. Yeah, so astrophysics. Good. I love it. <laughs> But, and, and this is, again, Car not mechanics, mechanics, we're everything. not endorsing yeah. masterclass. We're just saying you don't have to. Yeah, like, no, masterclass is awesome. It's if a lot of fun. Learning, I mean, a lot of fun. Great. Yeah. yeah. I have been yeah. watching some really great. Um, there, the, one of the, I'm watching this wonderful Indian chef and she's so brilliant. She's, she talks, it's cooking, but it's also culture. And I, oh, I just, I'll have to watch oh, it cool. I just love it. Yeah, she's really good. But yeah, so there's just, there's a lot of good stuff. And this is, Baldacci is a wonderful storyteller. If you haven't read him and you like mystery even a little tiny bit, you would really, really like, yeah. love this. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I think we should probably wrap up soon because we've been chatting here for about a half an hour and I think we're good. I mean, I think okay. that it, if it, there's any questions, but well, we've only got to, you know, um, but Myra and Aaron, if you want to say anything else, you are welcome. If there's anybody else watching and they want to mention something, go ahead. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on Book Chat. Okay. And by the Bye. way, you can find all of us online, right? I think it's just oh, what yeah. it is. TracyDouglas.com, CarrieNichols.com. Nichols. TracyDouglasBooks.com. Yeah. Uh, TracyDouglasBooks.com. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just, I just um, changed my web. And, and, and you'll have to forgive my uh, web page. It's a little behind. My son is... It's revamping it for me. But <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's all it's all about life. Well, thank you all and we'll thank talk you. to you later. Bye.